This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. All right, a lot to look at here with the Browns defense. So I kind of really just want to jump into it, but we're going to look at some specific things on this film breakdown in order. So the first thing we're going to look at is what's going on with these backside cushions and zone for the Cleveland Browns. Something's going wrong with them. We got to figure out what's going on with that. Um, I think Ronnie Hickman has a few plays in here. We need to talk about, unfortunately. Then we're going to look at the run defense, see what the issues are. Is it just scheme? Is it more than that? Is it just effort? What's going on with the run game? We're going to focus on that as well. Um, and then we're going to talk about when this defense plays well. Let's try to find out what else is going well, if they're capable of doing it more often. Because they do play well in every game for a spurt. It's just a question of how long and how consistently they will play well, unfortunately, so far throughout the season. Let's get into it. This play right here, again, this is a look at the zone here. So the Browns, on the backside of these plays, like running zone, like they'll run man on the front, zone on the backside. And this one you can't tell because they tried to disguise it a little bit, right? So they disguised the zone by having Mar Martin look like he's going man and he bails out his zone right here. So you can tell, boom, he's in zone. He rushes out to his seven-yard cushion to get it, and he keeps backpedaling here. And it's easy to see what happens here. Because they tried to disguise it, Martin has to keep going back, which means you could break this one out. That's just good design and, and way to take advantage of a tendency there once you realize the Browns were trying to disguise that. Look, that's not anything extraordinary there or signs of an extraordinary problem there. Let's look at the second um, cushion that they have here. So backside here, they're giving cushions on both sides. Both are about seven yard cushions. Seven yard cushions, pretty standard. It's not weird to do that. Devin Bush on one side, Denzel Ward on the other. Here's the thing I worry about with Denzel Ward. Is he just not capable of reacting in a, a in, in a fast enough way to get away with this in zone? Because look at how fast on the bottom of your screen. Devin Bush, a linebacker, reacts to his man banging this back to the back to the quarterback, right? Same thing happens here. But see, Devin Bush, he bangs. Devin Bush is almost on top of that immediately. Denzel, who probably has a little bit more responsibility than Devin Bush, mind you, still late on this. And if it just was one time, I'd understand. If he were able to make that tackle, I wouldn't care. But he's late, and he can't make the tackle because he's late. He's not in position. Something's going on with these cushions for Ward and Emerson. Um, another one here, backside cushion. Martin Emerson. See here. Well, it's actually frontside cushion, my bad. Frontside cushion. Again, the depth here is not crazy. It's a seven-yard cushion. It's pretty standard eight yard cushion or something like that. Yeah, it's eight yard cushion. For whatever reason, we can't get downhill. Right. He hits that out. We're still sitting on it. We're not we're, we're not reacting to it fast enough. Right. We're still sitting. We're still sitting. And then when we react on it. I don't know. It just doesn't feel as fast as Martin usually is here. It right? just takes him way too long to accelerate this. Usually Martin's right up on that. Now he gets a nice little lick in. But I just don't know what's going on there. It's not like the cushion's extraordinarily big. Seven, eight-yard cushions are standard in the NFL. 
So don't exactly know what's going on with that. Same thing happened here. And look, they went back to it. I think back to back plays here. Right. Same thing here. Cushion. Same exact route concept. And we just can't get on it. It's meant to beat that. That's fair enough. But when you know that they're going to run that out so often, they ran this thing. So they barely ever tested this cushion deep, right? Like they barely tried to even ever run into it. So when you know that they're running these outs, at some point you got to understand that something's up here, right? I mean, this is the fourth play. They've done this to you. They did it to you on the on the back side of this one too. Look, Denzel Ward. They do it to him here. Gardner doesn't take it. He has his eyes front side. And this time Martin's playing man. I think you get good coverage here. From Martin at least. And then you get a sack. Something's going on with these cushions, man. Because look, Denzel here. Again, backside cushion on an RPO. I don't know if he just gets caught with his pants down, but this is another seven-yard, eight-yard cushion. It's pretty standard. I don't know why we're so late to get on that, right? Like, once he puts that foot down, declares, and Gardner has that arm up, go down on that. We've seen Denzel do that before. I don't know why he was so late to react this week. It's just weird here. All right, let's look at Ronnie Hickman. I thought there were a couple plays here he's going to want back. Um, this one right here, so we're looking at Ronnie. Deep safety. Right here. Now, Ronnie has to be a bit more aware here. Yes, his job is to stay over top, but he has to recognize what the situation is. Right, so he backpedals here. He's the one high. And he should realize what's going on here, right? So, flat. And it's levels here. So now Ronnie should know once he sees this wide receiver cut in. Okay, that's the deepest route. I got to go up on that, right? Like, I got to go buzz to that. That's what Ronnie should be seeing here. That's what you want a safety to see here. You don't want your safety to just be comfortable watching the whole play, right? They're not a spectator. They're an active uh, participant on the field. So once you realize, okay, who's the deepest man on the field, let me go take care of him. You got to cover him. Instead, Ronnie just watches him. And luckily, this doesn't get completed. But you can't have this happen, right? Right here, backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. Okay, okay. Put your foot in the ground, go down, go downhill. Instead, he waits until the ball is thrown to do anything. This play right here, again, Ronnie Hickman back incredibly deep. I feel like the Browns might have came into this game being worried about being beaten deep. I don't understand why, but they were they seem to be worried about that. Um I don't think they ever got beat deep once in this game. Hickman, again, has to be a little bit more aware. Just like the last play when the deepest wide receiver cuts, you got to become a part of the play. This is a similar one here, right? You got to be aware of what's going on here. So 11 is streaking across, but Denzel Ward is in this zone here. Martin Emerson is following him over top. He is bracketed, which means if you're – Ronnie, you got to figure out, okay, where's the vacated space? If Denzel is here, but he's supposed to be here, if Martin is here, there's all this empty space right here. You need to buzz down at least to the sticks and, this, and, and really think about getting to the flat here, right? You want to see your safety make some plays. This is how safety can make some plays. You realize it's all good. Deepest man covered, right? 11's taken care of. You got... Got two people on him. You know that Denzel's right there. You saw him earlier. You see Martin over top. Okay, it's time to put your foot in the ground. 
and get to that tight end. Got to see it. Want him, want him to be more aware. Starting safety sees that. All right. Uh, next one. Not even sure what Hickman's doing here. So Ronnie Hickman right here. He just kind of ends up in the middle of the field covering nothing here. Not sure why he's there. And he buzzes down. I think he buzzed the wrong direction. Because it's a blitz, some pressure. They send Miles back in coverage. You have somebody here. You're playing the deep third here. It's very crude circles. I mean, I guess it could make sense that he would buzz down here and then you're playing, what, Denzel on a deep third here. It's just a lot of space right here in the middle of the field. I'd imagine you would want to prioritize your spacing a little differently if you're Jim Schwartz and have him buzz down here so you can take care of anything that could be in this area. Plus, he'd be in a position to make a play if Gardner Minshew ran. So I believe he buzzed to the wrong area. All right, but that's enough on Hickman. Let's talk about the Browns' run defense. Now, in general, I think the Browns are at the point to where I'd recommend personnel changes. I don't want to see Quentin Jefferson play as many snaps as he did next week. Um, he's just not usable there. Like, he's a decent enough pass rusher, but he's just not usable in run defense. I'd honestly rather play Kamara or, you know, put Alex Wright at three tech. I think both of those would both of those players would be significantly more useful at three tech than uh Quentin Jefferson has been as a run defender. Um and when you look at the Browns game next week going up against Washington, they have a ton of beef at tight end. They love to play 12, 13 personnel. Um and I just don't want Quentin Jefferson to be another thing that gets taken advantage of. Uh, and also, I watched the Browns and run defense and really wish they would have spunt the money on DJ Reader this offseason because, boy, could they use a game wrecker on the interior. All right, let's get into it. This right here is just a missed tackle by Jordan. Got to make that. It's an end around to a tight end. You're in position. Got to make that. All right, this one missed tackle by JOK. Got to make that. Nothing crazy there. Uh, this one was a good call, play call, actually. They caught the Browns in a nickel blitz. They ran right at the teeth of it, and then they, they caught the Browns with their pants down and then missed tackle, of course, first down. So, yeah, the missed tackles were definitely a thing in this game. Um, JOK right here, you would love if JOK trusts his instincts. He has the right idea to start, but he kind of slows himself down. Just trust it, right? He kind of hesitates here, which allows 71 to ear hole him. And that breaks this play free. Really just need him to trust his gut. His gut is good. His gut hasn't been causing the problems for the Browns run defense. Um, this is the stuff that drives me crazy. Okay, um, 54 does a terrible job containing here. So, right here. What you want 54 to do on the backside is play a squeeze, right? So, the Browns do, they slant. Um, the defensive line slants. So, they slant, 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 slant. This is intentional. Right, so you're going to slant the line that way. You know you're going to have a free man there. You're hoping they slide that way to adjust to it and give you either a one-on-one -on -one or just give you a full slide and leave this man empty, right, so he could be a free runner. Now, it's Ogbo's job to read the play. Hey, are they, is, this a, is this a straight drop back? If it is, run straight at the quarterback. Is this a run play? Wait, hold. Is this a screen? Wait, hold, right? Um, and you want him to contain... And you want him to do what we call squeeze. What a squeeze is, is basically taking where the left tackle is supposed to be as the edge defender and replacing that space with your body. Um, so he should be closer to where that left tackle was. 
So you see right there where you want them to be is about two yards over this way. You want them to be kind of scraping, right? Sometimes you even see a edge defender go as far as to put their hand on the back of the tackle to keep pace with it. The other thing that's wrong with this play from Okoronkwo, in my opinion, is that he's not set or active once he gets to that point um, to be able to contain the backside of this play, right? Like he's not doing a good job of having active feet. That was a problem for the Browns defense, no matter who was on the contain, right? We have this issue of always wanting to go upfield and not just being aware, setting up, and letting the play play out a little bit. So that's another thing that shows up in this game, and I'm going to show you some more plays that look like that. Um, you want to do this for a couple of reasons, right? If you're containing here, and this is a read option, and Gardner Minshew pulls, if you are all the way out here, you're leaving a lot of space for him to cut up inside and run inside of you. So you're leaving yourself vulnerable to a read option. Um, another thing is, if this is a end around or if they have an end around going here and you're too far upfield, they could just run that end around by you. We're actually going to see that with Miles Garrett. Um, you you want to be closer to that line back, lineman. Ugbo, way too far off. And instead of shutting this play down for a gain of zero, maybe putting them in a difficult third down situation, you let them squirm out for a first down. I mean, like, look at that at the end. That's just ridiculous. And now he's at the three. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it's more about technique than anything, right? So the same thing here. Again, not really active, not really paying attention to what's going on, just kind of running, right? <laughs> like, this doesn't look very active. This doesn't look like he's really excited to contain this play here. <laughs> Got to do a better job than this containing. Got to do a better job, right? Again, he should be in an active position right here. And he shouldn't just be blindly running behind the tackle. He should be replacing the tackle, right? In a position to attack, in a position to tackle. Instead, he gets caught here chasing the end around. And he lets Gardner Minshew take him out the play. Gardner Minshew took him out the play. Bad technique, man. You can get beat by anybody. You got bad technique. It's a horrible squeeze. Horrible squeeze. Because if you're in a more active position, you can just get Gardner Minshew's ass out the way and get upfield. Or you can start to chase this angle down. But instead, you're getting blocked by Gardner. Blocked by Gardner Minshew. Same thing here with Miles Garrett this time. Miles just doesn't see it. He actually is doing a good job with the spacing on this, right? He just does not see it. They, 15 just runs right by him. Look at this. Miles has no idea 15 is a ball carrier. He's got to see it. There's really no excuse for Miles not to be ready for that. Um, like, e even if you don't think he's the ball carrier, just touch him. What the hell is it going to do? Where else are you going to make a play at? Just make sure you touch him. Can't take that play off. Can't take that play off because you don't think it's running to your side. Just got to, you know, you ain't got to nail the guy. We got to get a hand on him. And then once you realize he has the football, tackle him. Delpit, I thought, did a good job on this play, right? Delpit does a good job engaging with uh, the tight end here and then getting inside of him. Hickman, horrible angle here. Hickman should be trying to stretch this play right here. Right. Let Delpit handle that inside. Hover over. But you should want to stretch, not let him get the outside. So Hickman, bad angle. All right. So the Raiders 
are going to do something here that we're going to see a lot next week versus the commanders called pin pool. What pin pool is, is exactly what it sounds like, right? They're going to pin and they're going to pull. So right here, wide receiver pins this end and then you pull around the pin. You're going to see this a ton next week in 12 and 13 personnel. Got to be able to handle it. How do you handle it? Well, when you run pin pull, there's a lot of moving parts. And when there's a lot of moving parts in a run play, it's susceptible to what I like to call the domino theory. And that is if you can change one thing, get one gear out of alignment on that play, you can mess up the whole thing. Watch right here how something is small as Sam Kamara holding his the, the guard that's double teaming him for just an extra half a second completely changes this play. So Sam Kamara, 92. Let me highlight him so y'all can see him. Sam Kamara right here, 92. Does a great job of just holding that guard for just a half second, right? He just does something to him, right? Puts a hand in his chest, slows him down just a little bit. Devin Bush does a great job seizing the moment. Gets to his spot, beats the guard to the spot. You see, the guard misses the block now. Now that the guards missed the block, he's supposed to take care of that linebacker. 19 has to eat Devin Bush. Devin swallows him and throws him into 74. And the dominoes fall. You see how it goes? Right? When you have all of this shit going on, all these moving parts for a run play, something small, as long as you make a play, no matter how small the play is, can knock over all the dominoes. Just a little bit of slowdown here leads to this lineman not being able to get to Devin Bush, which leads to Devin Bush knocking down 19, which leads to the offensive lineman that's pulling, having to stop to get to Devin Bush, which leads to the running back being left out on the edge, but naked. Dominoes. One, two, three, and boom. That's how you stop it. Got to make a play on the line of scrimmage. Got it. You can't let them get. You can't let their pullers, whoever there's, whoever's pulling, you can't let them get free. You got to slow them down a little bit. And if you slow them down a little bit, you can stop the play and you can knock the dominoes over. That's how you stop these like super complex run schemes where they're trying to pin pull and move all these guys. Also, that shit's pretty tiring, so they can't do it all game. But when you're trying to do that, when the team's trying to do that on you, you got to make a play at the line of scrimmage. Because you can't let those guards fly free. If those guards fly free. Your linebackers stand no chance. And they're going to get big gains off of that. Like right here. Again, this is kind of like not pin pull, but kind of an ideal of how this domino stuff works. Look at 72. 72 does not do a good job on this play of occupying his man. He has to do a better job of occupying that chip. Um, and there's really no excuse. He gets run blocked here, so he knows it's not play at well, it's not a pass. He gets run blocked here. And you see what happens? He lets 84 get free. 84 takes care of six. And boom. Free space. Now, if 72 does a better job and just affects that linebacker, uh, I mean, not the linebacker, that tight end a little bit, right? Does something to slow him down. Grant can beat him to that angle, get to that gap, and you're talking about a one or two yard gain. But since he doesn't do anything about it, doesn't see it, doesn't feel it, lets him get free, boom. Dalvin right here. He's got to give Ronnie McLeod more time. This turns into a big run. So Dalvin Tomlinson doesn't do a great job of occupying his space. 
Let's 55 release too le- too early. Ronnie can't get to the gap. He gets blocked by 65. Free space. The gap assignment is killed. Boom. Get a hand on the chest. More powerful position in there. Do something about 65. Make him a little late to that assignment. And you have a stop. But instead, giving up a big-ass run play. Got to make the play on the line of scrimmature. Got to make the play on the line of scrimmature. Um, right here, again, another one where you don't make the play on the line of scrimmage. Zadarius Smith cannot get beat by a tight end like this. Watch this. This is Zadarius Smith getting moved by a tight end. We'll see it in the end zone angle. That frees up this whole play. There are some other questions I want to ask about this play because I'm not 100% sure. But, yeah, Zadarius Smith eighty on 86. It's a tight end. And look, singled up. He tries to get to the quarterback here. 86 takes advantage. Boom, gap. Now, there's another question you got to ask here. Who is the weak side C-gap player? I have two theories on who the weak side C-gap player is. So, if you don't know what C-gap is, um, basically, this is how the gaps work. Center, A-gap, B-gap. Outside tackle, tight end, C gap. So A, B, C, A, B, C. Short side of the field, weak, strong, weak side. B, C gap. So weak side, C gap. Who's responsible for it? I don't know the answer to this question. I only have theories that I can guess on who is responsible. I think it's one of two things. I think it might have been Ward. But when this motion happened that brought Newsom to this side of the field, Ward pushed the responsibility of this gap to Newsom since he was closer, which makes sense. And I think that's the case because Newsom almost immediately shoots towards C-Gap. Um, or it might have been the case that JOK was supposed to have this gap, but then Newsom came over, took that gap and this gap. Or it might have been that both these guys took the wrong gap. I have no idea what the answer to that question is. Only Jim Schwartz and the associated coaches do. But... Zedarius, got to do a better job there. Not getting blocked out by a tight end. And shout out to Jacoby Myers, I believe that is. Jacoby Myers, excellent job blocking Greg Newsom there. Springs this play up. I bet he got a helmet sticker for that. Good on him. Big play there. The Browns defense still capable of playing good football, man. Look at this coverage by Greg Newsom. Still a really good player. Still capable of doing his thing in man. Again, look at this coverage. Look at this. Well, not cover. Yeah, look at this coverage. Right. The Browns are capable of playing the same level of defense they were last year. They just got to figure out how they can be more consistent, how they can be more locked in and more mentally focused. What I see with this team is a team that's just not focused all the time and not locked in for whatever reason. But they are capable because when they are locked in, they look like this, like what you see on the screen. So the question is, why aren't they doing it? And if they're going to start doing it sooner than later, because they're more than capable of it. That's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have a better night.